Hi, I'm Lucy, your narrator. Thanks for joining me for another video, and if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. Before we get started, please kindly take a moment right now and click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be alerted of every time I upload a new video. And also please watch this video to the end to see the preview trailer and some really nice behind the scenes photos. Sunset Boulevard is a drama and film noir movie. It was released in the USA in 1950 and it stars Gloria Swanson and William Holden. And some of their co-stars were Cecil B. DeMille, Eric Von Straheim, Nancy Olson, Buster Keaton, Fred Clark, Jack Webb, Hedda Hopper, H.B. Warner, and others. It was directed by Billy Wilder and it won three Oscars. The movie is about a screenwriter develops a dangerous relationship with a faded film star determined to make a triumphant return. The character of Norma Desmond is modeled on the fate of several leading actresses of the silent era. Mary Pickford lived in seclusion away from the public eye while both May Murray and Clara Bow had well-documented struggles with mental illness. Other actresses considered for Norma Desmond were Mae West, who wanted to rewrite the dialogue, Mae Murray, and Mary Pickford. In fact, Billy Wilder and Charles Brackett even went to Pickfair to pitch the story to Pickford, but her horrified reaction as the story progressed made them stop halfway through and apologize to her. Daryl F. Zanuck, Olivia de Havilland, Tyrone Power, and Samuel Goldwyn all refused to allow their names to be used in the film but Billy Wilder decided to use Xanax and Powers' names anyway. Oddly enough, the reclusive Greta Garbo granted permission to use her name, though when she saw the film itself, she was sorry she had done so. She felt that Wilder used her name in a past tense context, and she was offended. The Desmond Mansion was located not on Sunset Boulevard, but at 641 South Irving Boulevard, on the corner of Crenshaw and Irving. It was built in 1924 by William Jenkins at the cost of $250,000. Its second owner was Jean-Paul Getty, who purchased it for his second wife. Mrs. Getty divorced her millionaire husband and received custody of the house. It was when she rented it to the Paramount for the filming. The only addition was the swimming pool, which wasn't equipped with a means of circulating the water, so it was useless after filming. The pool was used in its empty condition in Rebel Without a Cause in 1955. The mansion was torn down in 1957 and a large office building for Getty Oil built on the sty still stands on the spot. The drugstore where Joe Gillis meets up with his old movie industry friends is Schwab's Pharmacy. It was then a real pharmacy soda fountain at the intersection of Sunset Boulevard and Crescent Heights Boulevard in West Hollywood. It was widely known as a top Hollywood hangout for many actors, directors, writers, and producers. F. Scott Fitzgerald suffered a heart attack while in Schwab's in 1940, and contrary to legend, Lana Turner was not discovered by a talent agent in Schwab's, but rather in a drugstore across from Hollywood High School about three miles to the east. Schwab's was torn down in 1988 to make way for a movie theater and a shopping center. Paramount was more than happy to be the subject of the film and didn't ask for the studio to be disguised. In fact, such was the buzz about the film during production that the viewing of the Daily Rushes became one of the hottest tickets on the lot. Cecil B. DeMille appears in the film on a studio set. This was the actual set of Sanson and Delilah in 1949, which DeMille was making at the time. Cecil B. DeMille agreed to do his cameo for a $10,000 fee and a brand new Cadillac. When Billy Wilder went back to him later to secure a close-up, DeMille charged him another $10,000. 
Montgomery Clift quit the production because he was, like the character of Joe, having an affair with a wealthy, middle-aged former actress, Libby Hallman, and he was scared the press would start prying into his background. As a practical joke, during the scene where William Holden and Ansi Olsen kiss for the first time, Billy Wilder let them carry on for minutes without yelling cut. He'd already gotten the shot he needed on the first take. Eventually, it wasn't Wilder who shouted cut, but Holden's wife, artist, Brenda Marshall, who happened to be on the set that day. Unlike the character she played, Gloria Swanson had accepted the fact that the movies didn't want her anymore and had moved to New York, where she worked on radio and later television. Although she had long before ruled out the possibility of a movie comeback, she was nevertheless highly intrigued when she got the offer to play the lead. Gloria Swanson almost considered rejecting the role of Norma Desmond after Billy Wilder requested she do a screen test for the role. Her friend George Cocor, who initially recommended her for the part, told her, if they want you to do 10 screen tests, do 10 screen tests. If you don't, I will personally shoot you. Swanson agreed to the audition and won the role. For the first industry screening, Paramount executives invited several silent film stars. At the end, they stood and cheered for Gloria Swanson's return. When Norma Desmond says to the guard at the Paramount Studio gates, without me, there wouldn't be any Paramount Studio, the words could apply to Gloria Swanson herself as she was the studio's top star for six years running. The photos of the young Norma Desmond that decorate the house are all genuine publicity photos from Gloria Swanson's heyday. When Gloria Swanson finished Norma's final scene, the mad staircase descent, she burst into tears and the crew applauded. Even though it wasn't the last scene filmed, Billy Wilder threw a party for her as soon as the shot was finished. To everyone's surprise, Judy Holliday won the Best Actress Oscar in 1951 for Born Yesterday in 1950, beating Gloria Swanson in this film, and Betty Davis in All About Eve in 1950. The general consensus was that the two titans had canceled each other out, leaving the field clear for Holliday. In later interviews, Davis admitted that she thought Swanson's work in this film was absolutely outstanding. According to Gloria Swanson's daughter, Michelle Amman, her mother stayed in character throughout the entire shoot, even speaking like Norma Desmond when she arrived home in the evening after filming. On the last day of shooting, Swanson drove back to the house she, her mother, and daughter shared during production, announcing, there were only three of us in it now, meaning that Norma Desmond had taken her leave. Gloria Swanson was paid $50,000 plus $5,000 per week for any time over schedule. Gloria Swanson's career was not revitalized by this film. She was disappointed to see that all the parts she was offered subsequently were watered-down versions of Norma Desmond. Ultimately, she retired completely from films, making only sporadic appearances, notably in Airport of 1975. When crew members asked Billy Wilder how he was going to shoot the burial of Norma's monkey, one of the film's most bizarre scenes, he just said, you know, the usual monkey funeral sequence. Wait a minute, haven't I seen you before? I know your face. Get out or shall I call my servant? You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in... I knew there was something wrong. They're dead. They're finished. 
There was a time in this business when they had the eyes of the whole wide world. But that wasn't good enough for them. Oh, no. They had to have the ears of the world, too. So they opened their big mouths, and out came talk. Talk, talk. That's where the popcorn business comes in. You buy yourself a bag and plug up your ears. Look at them in the front offices. The masterminds. They took the idols and smashed them. The Fairbankses, the Gilberts, the Valentinos. And who have we got now? Some nobody. Don't blame me. I, I'm not an executive, just a writer. You are writing words, words, more words. Well, you've made a... Get out! Max! Next time I'll bring my autograph album along. Or maybe a hunk of cement and ask for your footprint. I'm talking from the bedroom of Norma Desmond. Don't bother with a rewrite, man. Take this direct. Ready? As day breaks over the murder house. Yes, you'll read the big black headlines about Norma Desmond and this Hollywood scandal. But you'll never read the true story about the rest of us who were part of it. Me, for instance. Joe Gillis, a promising young writer from Dayton, Ohio. And Betty, that nice kid I met at a Hollywood party who knew nothing about me but knew what she wanted. Don't you love Artie? Of course I love him. I always will. I'm just not in love with him anymore. What happened? You did? Well, we should have lived happily ever after, like they do in the movies. But this was different, because this is a Hollywood story about the people who make the movies, the little ones that you never hear of, like Betty and me, the great ones like Cecil B. DeMille, all those who knew Norma Desmond, a strange woman who left her mark on all of us, who crossed her path. Has it ever occurred to you that I may have a life of my own, that there, there may be some girl that I'm crazy about? Who? Some car hop or a dress extra? What I'm trying to say is that I'm all wrong for you. You want a Valentino, somebody with polo ponies, a big shot. What you're trying to say is you don't want me to love you. Say it. Gloria Swanson, one of the great personalities of this generation in a role that comes to an actress once in a lifetime. Rising to the heights, William Holden creates a startling portrayal. And a new star is born in Sunset Boulevard, Miss Nancy Olson. Joe? Where are you? What's this all about? Why don't you come out and see for yourself? The address is 10,086 Sunset Boulevard. Yes, come out to see for yourself the film that reaches a new milestone of dramatic daring. The film that every critic says is a giant among motion pictures. Like that one, we've got a lot more. Hotter than your morning coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. Until then, bye for now and be blessed.